We are interrupting our normal programmes to bring you an important announcement. You're watching BBC News from London. A short while ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In a statement, the palace said, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. You're watching BBC News. A short while ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In a statement, the palace said, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme. Now, Prince Philip was the longest serving royal consort in British history. He was at the Queen's side for more than 70 years. He held a central role in British public life, loyally representing the Queen at home and abroad and supporting the monarch in all of her duties. The Duke had served in the Royal Navy before embracing royal duties full time when his wife became Queen in 1952. He was Her Majesty's closest advisor, responsible for modernising aspects of royal life, making the family more accessible and less formal in its ways. Philip led a remarkably active life, supporting hundreds of charities, campaigning for nature conservation promoting leadership and encouraging young people to test their abilities in the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. During his long life, he maintained a close bond with the armed services, especially the Royal Navy, and encouraged his children and grandchildren to serve as he had done. Philip was known for his outspoken style and sometimes his controversial wit and could be relied upon to speak his mind, even on difficult issues. With Philip's death, the royal household has lost a dominant figure. Her Majesty has lost a husband and British public life has lost a powerful presence, a man whose momentous life spanned a century. Let's just remind you of the uh, statement that has been issued in the last few minutes from Buckingham Palace. It says... It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell joins us now on the line. Nicholas, a long life now ended, devoted to service to the Queen and the country. Yes, a life of service alongside his wife, as you say. Uh, two months and one day short of what would have been 
his 100th birthday, a milestone that he was so determined to reach and for which the royal family would have gathered in celebration at Windsor Castle. Not a surprise, given his age, given the fact that uh, just over a month ago, of course, he was in hospital for, for a month. Uh, uh, he underwent some uh, heart surgical procedure, uh, but he left hospital looking frail, but returning to Windsor Castle to spend these last weeks with his wife, the Queen. And this is a huge blow for her, as indeed it is for any spouse, leaving, losing uh, a, a partner, uh, with whom they have been for more than 70 years, 73 years, a greater span of years than most of us have been uh, alive. So a huge blow for the Queen. And it is fair to say, I think, that in so many ways, the success and the stability of her reign owes a great deal to the success and the stability of their marriage. He was the person to whom she could always turn, the private support which was so invaluable in the isolated position, the lonely position as head of state. It's a huge loss for the royal family. For so long, he was the dominant figure in the family's domestic life, an important source of advice and support for those who married into the royal family, as he did, uh, for William and Harry in their military careers, and for all that he was noted and will be remembered for his abrasiveness there was also a much more sensitive side to his personality, and that uh, became apparent in the advice that he gave to younger members of the royal family, the advice that he attempted to give to Diana, Princess of Wales, when it was clear that her marriage uh, was, was failing. Uh, and there is a gap in our national life now. For so many years, he made a huge and significant contribution, not just to the success of uh, the Queen's reign, but in his own right, he had to find a niche for himself in the nation's life, and he did that. So a little colour has left the national stage today. He was much more than the rather gaff-prone, foot-in-the-mouth caricature, as he was so often presented. A man who made a contribution in his own right, but whose greatest contribution was in the support that he gave to his wife, the Queen. And let's just, uh, before we move on, Nicholas, stay with us if you would. I just would like to read again that statement that's been issued in the last few minutes from Buckingham Palace. It says, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. Nicholas Witchell, our royal correspondent, is uh, here. And as you say, a very long-serving consort, the longest serving that we've seen. Uh, but before he married the Queen, he had a very distinguished naval career, Nick. Yes, and there are those who feel that he could have risen to very senior rank within the Royal Navy. And, of course, it was one of the frustrations that he faced in the 1950s that he had to give up that naval career. I mean, he, this is a man who was naturally a dominant personality, a commander, uh, and yet he had to take the subservient role, if you like, uh, in second place, behind the Queen. And he did undoubtedly find that difficult back in the 1950s. Uh, and he had to adapt. He had to find a role for himself. There was no constitutional significance. He was never prince consort. He was never uh, able to see uh, state papers or involve himself in that business, his, his wife, the Queen's business. So that uh, added to the frustration that he felt in the 1950s. There was a young queen on the throne surrounded by experienced courtiers who were suspicious of this young husband who was something of a modernizer in royal terms and he did then struggle a little with that he found it difficult but he found a role for himself he could be contrary he could be disputatious and you have to remember that this was a man with a sharp mind intellectually very curious a sharp mind and of course sometimes a sharp tongue he could be abrasive and difficult uh, but 
uh, it was through that, with this intellectual curiosity, that he developed areas of expertise and of curiosity, areas in which he uh, took a particular interest. He was one of the pioneers of the environmental movement, the first president of what was then the World Wildlife Fund. He set up the Duke of Edinburgh's award. That perhaps is the, the, the one entity for which he will be most remembered, giving so many thousands of, indeed hundreds of thousands of young people an opportunity to experience aspects of life that hitherto had been denied to them. He was a resilient personality, self-sufficient, uh, and that, of course, was rooted in the rootless childhood that he had. He came of royal blood from European royalty, uh, 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 and he was adaptable. And he called on all of those qualities to fashion a way, a route for himself through those difficult days in the 1950s, finding a role for himself and settling into that role of support alongside the Queen. Yes, he once said that it was all rather trial and error of, uh, in that role to begin with, finding a way to support the Queen as her consort but and having to devise his own ways of making a contribution to national life. And there were so many thousands of engagements, many of which, of course, we wouldn't have even have been aware of, but he had an extremely busy calendar before he retired. Yes, one of the busiest members of, of the royal family until his retirement from active royal duty in 2017 at the age of... Uh, 94, 95 then. And it was. It was a life, uh, an adult life of service and of duty and of support for the Queen. He made, I think it is reasonable to say, an incalculable contribution to the success of her reign. People who know them both say that she simply could not have done it without him, without this constant source of support to the Queen. Much of it, much of it, private support, never witnessed never seen by the world, but he was the person to whom she could always turn and on whom she could always rely. And that has now gone. Now, it is important to say that there can be no question of the Queen now withdrawing or retiring. She will continue with her role as the UK's head of state. But it is a great loss to her, a moment of, of, of great sadness for the Queen to lose her husband of 73 years, uh, the man who has been, as you say, the longest-serving consort in British history. Nick, for the moment, thank you very much, but do stay uh, with us. Let's remind you of the statement that the Palace has issued today. It says, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss.